people. Thank you for those Saturday uh, 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 marches. Together, uh, we can uh, we can do justice to what's happening. Um, I'm going to bring in another one of the signatories to those fantastic marches that we've seen every Saturday now organised at such uh, sh short notice with so many people attending and more to come. I want to bring in Shamil Jorda of the Friends of Al 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 Al-Aqsa. Now, these, this is an organisation, it's a non-governmental organisation that is concerned with defending the human rights of Palestinians and they are co-signatories. Uh, to those marches on Saturday. Can I bring in Shamil? Thank you. I'm very, very pleased that we're hosting, well, that Finsbury Park Mosque is hosting this event. Man, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be a good 10 minutes, so you have to bear with me. Right. If you can't hear me, just tell me enough to lift up and stuff like that, right? Okay, what can I. One's okay, I think. That's not as bad, not as daunting. What can I say that Hugh hasn't said? Hugh's always going to say things ten times better than I could ever do. And we've got speakers here that are going to articulate things a billion times better than I could ever do. I'm going to keep this short because I honestly and genuinely believe that it should always be about the people. And the people is us in the room. Every single person needs to have their say, work out how we can actually move together to move forward in this, in this unified form. But first things first, we need to work out what we're fighting for. We need to work out what is it that we go onto the streets for? So, at this particular moment in time, we're talking about Gaza. But let's not lose focus. Gaza is part of Palestine. Sometimes I hear these, these notions that almost Gaza is separate to Palestine and the West Bank and Jerusalem. No. Gaza is part of Palestine. What we can't lose focus about what's happening in the West Bank and Jerusalem. Sometimes when we get involved in these demonstrations, in these protests, and part of the movement, except obviously what's happening in Gaza and the massacre that's occurring, we lose sight, but we can't. By losing sight of the occupation as a whole, we do a disservice to ourselves and the cause that we fight for. So remember, remember, we're looking for an end to the occupation. We're not looking for an end to the ceasefire. We're not looking for a ceasefire, sorry. We're looking for an end to the occupation. Some people have been saying, oh, do we have to come out on Saturday? Because there's been a ceasefire. It looks like it's holding. Come on, let's think. Whether there's a ceasefire or not, the occupation continues. Whether it's on the news or not, the occupation continues. Masjid al-Aqsa is occupied. West Bank is occupied. Jerusalem is occupied. Gaza is under siege. Whether or not it's on the news. So we need to start talking, as, as Hugh said, about these multipliers. We, every single person here, needs to be that multiplier. We need to be talking to other people. When we say sometimes, oh, I wish there was more people at these demonstrations or this meeting. Oh, I wish my friend was here. Did you ask your friend? Did you bring your friend? Did you call your friend? Did you say, hey, look, I'm going. I'm going to pick you up on the way there. We need to make these efforts to grow a movement. A movement just doesn't grow by itself. So, one, end occupation. Two, okay, let's focus on Gaza. Has anyone been to Gaza here? If you've been to Gaza, just put your hand up. We've got one, two, three. okay, so we've got quite a few people here. I want to sh very quickly share my ex sh short experience at Gaza recent couple of I say recent, time flies, doesn't it? It's about a year and a half ago, two years ago. The first thing that strikes you when you go through the Rafa crossing is the shelling, the bullet holes in the buildings on left and right. You're kind of like, oh, this is not good. As you, as you carry on your journey into Gaza City, through the Gaza Strip, all you see is the shelling from left to right, left to right, and it almost becomes like architecture. That's how bad it is, and that's how regular it is. But at the same time, which is something that I wasn't expecting to see, was buildings being built. Buildings being built continuously throughout. What you saw, when, when I asked one of um, our hosts there, I said, how come these buildings are being built? How does that happen? You know, the siege. What's going on? Are we being hoodwinked, you know, talk about the siege? What's going on? He goes, where there's a will, there's a way. And it's the tunnels. The tunnels are the way. So when Netanyahu talks about these smuggling tunnels, these terror tunnels, 
These tunnels are the lifeline to Gaza. Without these tunnels, the food wouldn't be going in. The electricity wouldn't be going in. The cattle wouldn't be going in. Gaza would not be surviving without these so-called terror tunnels. These aren't terror tunnels. These are survival tunnels. And we need to be clear that we support these tunnels. Every time there's action, every time there is unsettlement in the Sinai, Gaza shuts down. Gaza shuts down. So we need to be mindful that let's not fall into this trap when they try and talk about these terror tunnels. These terror tunnels are part of, of a strategy to actually close down Gaza even more. How long have I got? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to wind down something. I'm long. <laughs> two, two, two minutes? Cool. Ah, right, cool. So, then we talk about water. When I was washing my face, admittedly quite late at night, I should have washed up a little bit earlier, washing up and I accidentally tasted some water. I had to spit the water out. The water was so salty. I've read about it, but I didn't actually understand why it's so salty. So once again, I asked my host, what's up with the water? And the host said, the water naturally in, in Gaza, rainfall is relatively low anyway. The water is supposed to flow naturally down from the West Bank into Gaza and replenish the water table. Unfortunately, the way the settlements have been built deliberately, the water cannot flow down. That's one. Two, due to the lack of uh, sanitation equipment that's allowed in, into Gaza, sewage in Gaza is pumped into the sea. The water table replenishes itself from the, from the seawater that's full of sewage. So essentially, what people are drinking is sewage. It's coming out through, through, a bit, through the water process. Now these issues, this one issue, for example, when we see over the last month, during Ramadan especially, charities have been raising millions of pounds, which is great, because aid is required right now. But we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that you can give as much aid as you want. You can give as much aid as you want, but that's not going to solve the situation in Palestine. Palestine is a political problem. It needs a political solution, and that's why we're here. You cannot give enough you can never give it so much money to to take away the humiliation of a mother who has to give birth at a checkpoint you can never give enough money to a child who's become an orphan because of, because of the occupation and because of the bombing and the killing you cannot give enough money that will solve the blockade you need to get politically active it's good don't get me wrong it's good that we're giving money it's good for this current situation but if we're not getting politically active at the same time, we're doing a disservice to the cause. Simple. So, please, on Saturday, no, sorry, from now to Saturday, speak to all your contacts. Whoever's on Facebook, whoever's on Twitter, whoever's on the phone call, your next door neighbor, at work, blah, 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 Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, you could go on. Write a letter. If you do it first class tonight, we'll probably get there tomorrow, yeah? Do whatever you can. Everyone has a responsibility. Everybody has it within themselves. As Hugh and our chair said earlier, you're here to show you're ready to act. Yeah? But there's more to just showing up to a place. It's, the, it's not the meetings and the protests that are important. It's never about the meeting and the protests. Meetings and the protests are, the, are a place where we can galvanize, get to know people and talk about people and get inspired. But it's what, when you leave these doors, it's when you leave these doors, when you're by yourself, it's the work that you do, making sure that you get involved with Stop the War, PSC, FOA, other organizations. Get involved in the action points. Action points are coming out all the time, but if we're not actioning them, they're not very, what's the verb? What, what, actionable or something, right? So, get active. Bottom line. Thank you very much.